The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Preaxer Zemium Fungicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Welcome to the Soybean School. Every year is different. It's something we hear quite often in agriculture. So, what's in store for the 2022 soybean crop as it moves through the vegetative stages? Will it be a white mold year? On this episode, I'm joined by BASF agronomist Ken Curra to discuss a slow developing soybean crop and how that could impact disease management and fungicide strategy. Here's Ken Curra. Now, Ken, you and I had this conversation about fungicide strategies last June, late June, and it was in a field that was much different than this one, a much different spring. What does that mean for, for fungicide strategy this year? Yeah, so 2021, we, you know, we shot this video a year ago. We were in V5 soybeans, right, fifth trifoliate. They were uh, starting to put some size on. They had just closed in, not much bare ground visible. And, uh, you know, we were dry at the time, and a week later it started raining, Got pretty concerned about, about white mold, especially on the growthier fields and the, and the moderate to higher risk fields. Now we were fortunate that white mold really didn't go on season long, but certainly at the time, uh, you know, that shift in the weather after we did this video caused a, you know, caused a lot of growers to get motivated to do a preventative white mold fungicide application. Here we are this year, and I mean, I'm really struck by how many sluggish fields of beans are out there in 2022, and and really when we look at uh, you know, we look at last fall's tough soybean harvest, that, that frequent wetting down, drying out of the soybean crop really doesn't do vigor any good the following year. And I think that's what we're seeing as well as a, a couple of tough planting windows for a lot of soybean acres in Ontario, just with some temperature swings at, uh, and working around some, some high levels of high yield corn residue. There's a lot of different things going on this year's bean crop that have it a little bit behind and that impacts the fungicide decision for sure. So Ken, obviously we have a much smaller soybean plant this time of year compared to last year. What does that mean for white mold? Yeah, so it, it really doesn't change the decision tree, right? Farmers know their fields and their consulting agronomists know their fields with them. And you know, so the high risk field is still the high risk field. It's that moderate risk field that we really need to talk about, right? And this brings in again, you know, those components of the disease triangle, this host crop of soybeans, you know, white mold, you know, that sclerotinia is present in the field. It's really just a, dependent on when the bean flowers, when those spores release, and uh, sclerotinia becomes available to infect the soybean plant. And we look at the environment component, you know, are we gonna have moderate temperatures, frequently overcast, a damp soybean canopy, once they start flowering kind of in that R1 to R2.5, R3 stage. So it really hasn't changed. We need to scout, we need to monitor. Um, we're just gonna be watching some of those moderate risk fields a little bit closer and really relying on scouting in our eyes to tell us what we need to do there. So, you know, when it comes to that, that one use or two use strategy, Ken, it's the same approach here. We wanna keep our eyes on the, the factors for white mold. And then after that, if we need to, we come back with a second application. Exactly, so let's start with the high risk scenario, right? We're gonna go in there. I, I always say to growers in the high risk scenario, don't be ashamed to be too early with that application, right? We'll talk about R2 or earlier. So, you know, by the time beans reach R2, they were probably R2 yesterday, right? So don't, you know, get in there once you start to see those first few flowers visible and if the beans are growthy. Now we're standing here in 30 inch rows today. So, I mean, this, this, this isn't gonna fit that scenario quite as much as a seven and a half inch or 15 inch row would. But we wanna get in there early and use a true white mold product. So, um, product that has one or more white mold uh, active fungicide ingredients in there, right? So labeled for suppression of white mold. Uh, we want to avoid the, the single mode of action products just from a stewardship standpoint. We want to go with those, those pre-mix white mold fungicide products, go with a strong white mold suppression fungicide. And then we look at a two pass program. If, con if conditions really persist and that environment gets, gets worse, uh, we have talked in the past about that 10 to 14 day interval, but if you ask any white bean or dry bean grower that wants to manage white mold, they'll tell you you need to shrink that up and they're absolutely right in soybeans. So really, if that environment stays high risk, seven to 10 days later, come in, you're at that R2, R2.5 stage, and we put a strobilurone product in there to extend that white mold control and push us further into grain fill and give that plant a shot of, uh, of plant health and, and give it the ability to pack some seed weight 
into the plant and some yield as well as fend off white mold further on into the season. If you're looking at that low risk scenario, um, you know, you can probably afford to wait until that R2, R2.5 stage this year. Go in with a Strabilioron mix fungicide and, and that'll be enough to provide you some white mold suppression as well as uh, giving you that plant health and that yield aspect to, to protect that crop.